In this Blender tutorial, I will show you how to use Blender's four light objects. Now, if you'd like to learn all the basics of lighting in Blender, then definitely check out my Lighting for Beginners tutorial with the link in the description. And in that video, as well as going over the light objects in Blender, I also show you how to use material lights and world lights, how to add in HDRIs, and many other lighting features in Blender. And then real quick before we start, I did want to let you know about an amazing Blender add-on for getting realistic sky lighting, and that is the Physical Starlight and Atmosphere Blender add-on. Physical Starlight and Atmosphere is an amazing Blender add-on for creating realistic skies and sky lighting. I've used the add-on myself and I highly recommend it. You can customize the sun, atmosphere, stars, clouds, fog, and more. The add-on also provides some outstanding sky presets, such as daytime and sunset, fog and haze, Mars, and even retro wave. You can also change the time of day just by rotating the sunlight. Check out the add-on with the link in the description, and by purchasing the add-on through my link, you'll be helping to support this channel. So in this video, I am going to be using the Cycles Rendering Engine to get more realistic lighting, but you could definitely use Eevee if you want to. And then if you click right over here on the World Properties, I turned the background color to fully black just so that we can see the effect of the lights better. I'm also going to hold down the Z button and go into the Rendered Mode so I can see the light. And this drone 3D model that I've added into the scene is a tutorial that I created. If you'd like to check out that tutorial on how to create this sci-fi drone, link will be in the description. So I will press shift A and I'm going to go down here to light and I'm going to add the first light which is a point light. Now if you select the light, you can see that there is the object data properties of the light. And if I click on this, you can see that I can actually change this light between all four lights. So you can press shift A, go down here to light and add any of the lights, or if you already have a light, you can change it just by clicking here to change the type of light. Now this point light basically acts like a light bulb because it emits light out from all different angles. And right over here on the object data properties of the light, there are some different settings. So I can change the color right here. I can also turn the power up so I can just drag this value and make it much brighter. And as I move this light around, you can see it is emitting light out from all different angles. Now the point light also has a radius value. And if I turn the radius up, then the lighting is going to be much softer because the light is much bigger. And so there is more surface area of where the light is coming out of. So you can see the shadows of this robot drone are much softer now, or if I turn the radius way down to a very small number, the light is now coming out of a smaller area, and so those shadows are going to be very sharp. And there also is this cast shadow button. I don't really use this that often because I do want it to cast a shadow because that's realistic. But if for some reason you don't want this light to cast a shadow, you can turn that off and you can see there's no shadow. All right, so let's change this to the next light, which is the sunlight. So I'm going to click here on sun and you can see it's way too strong. So I just need to turn the strength way down. I'm going to turn the strength to like a five. So just like the point light, the sunlight also has a color here and I can also change the strength. And because this is a sunlight to make it look a little bit more like sunlighting, I'm going to make this a very, very slight yellow color. So this sunlight acts just like sunlighting. And so this light is very good for large scenes or lighting environments. Now the sunlight is going to emit light from the angle of this line right here. So you can hit the R key to rotate the light around and that's going to change the angle of the light. Now because this is acting like sunlight, the lighting isn't going to change even if you move the light around because it's going to actually emit light from anywhere in the scene. So even if I move this light around and even if I move the light under the plane, you can see it's still going to emit light down on the plane. Now if you want to change the sharpness of the light, you have this angle right here. So if you turn the angle way down, you can see the shadows and the lighting is going to be very sharp. But if you want the shadows to be much more soft, you can turn the angle up and now you can see the lighting is much more soft. So on a cloudy overcast day, the clouds are making the light much more soft and so the shadows are much more soft. Or on a very sunny clear day, the lighting is much more sharp and so the edge of the shadows are going to be much sharper. And then again, there's also this cast shadows button if you want to use it. Let's go to the next light now, which is the spotlight. And it's very dark, so let's just turn the power way up so it's brighter. So the spotlight acts just like a flashlight or a theater or a stage light. And it could also be used as a searchlight as well. Because the spotlight is only going to emit light from the cone, which you can see right here. And if I move the spotlight farther and farther away from the objects, you can see there's still going to be that cone right there. So you can see that circle, but it is much more dim. And just like the other lights, there is the color and there is also the power. And then there is the radius here. And this is again going 
going to make the lighting sharper or softer. So if I turn the radius way down, now you can see the edges are quite sharp and the shadows are very sharp. Or if I turn the radius up, there is more surface area where the light is being emitted out of, and so it is much more soft lighting. There's also the cast shadows as well, so if for some reason you want to turn off the shadows, you can hit that button there. Now if you want to change the size of the cone, you can hit the S key and scale the light. Now there's also this beam shape here, so if you open up the beam shape, you can change the spot size. So if you want to make this look maybe like a searchlight, you could turn the spot size way down, and now it's quite thin. And then there is also the blend here, and this blend option here is going to make the edges of the light sharper or softer. And if I hold down the Z button and go back to the solid viewport mode, if you want to see what the light is shining on, then there's this really cool show cone button. So I can click on the show cone, and then I can move this around, and I can see where the light is going to hit. Now you can also use the spotlight to project images or videos just like a projector. And so if you'd like to learn how to do that, then you can check out my other tutorial. I'll have a card right up there in the corner and also the link in the description to that tutorial. And so you can actually add in images or videos and then you can project that as a light source using the spotlight. All right, so let's go to the last light, which is the area light. And the area light is probably my favorite light. I definitely use it the most out of the four lights. And I'm going to turn the power to like a thousand so it's a little bit less bright and then I can move this closer and I will hit the S key to make it bigger. So the area light is a plane which is projecting light and it's only going to project light from the front side of the plane where the line is pointing. So if I rotate this light over you can see it's not projecting light out from this side of the plane only the front side of the plane. And just like all the other lights it has a color value and you can also change the strength. Now you can also change the size of it right here, so if you don't want to scale the light, you can instead scale it with this size value. Now there's also some different shapes here, so the default one is square if you want this to be a square light, but I could also change this to rectangle, and when you change it to rectangle, you're going to have an X and Y value, so I could make this a very thin light if I wanted to. And I really like using this rectangle to create rim lights. What I'm going to do is just delete this plane just to get it out of the way, and then I can move the light back, and I can rotate it over, and I'm going to point it at our robot. And now if I look at the front of the robot, you can see we have a nice rim light right there behind the robot, and it's popping the robot out from the background, and you can see the shape of it better. And as well as that, there also is a disc, and a disc is going to be the same thing, but it's just going to be a circle instead. And then finally, there's also an ellipse, an ellipse is also going to be a circle, but you're going to have the X and Y values. So if you wanted to create like a rim light or create like a really long light, but you wanted it to be a bit more circular and a bit more smooth on the edges, you could change that to an ellipse. Now similar to the spotlight, the area light also has a beam shape. So if you open up the beam shape tab right here, you can change the spread. And so if I turn this way down, that's going to act very similar to a spotlight. Or I can turn the spread way up and now it's going to have a much bigger angle where it emits light. So that is how you use the four different light objects in Blender. And if you'd like to learn all about lighting in Blender, then definitely check out my Lighting for Beginners tutorial with the link in the description. And if you'd like to help support this channel, then some great ways to do that are by checking out my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. Links are in the description. But I hope you found this helpful, and thanks for watching.